Take a deep breath and relax. Pause and enjoy the view, for this is a diet story with a difference. Uh, We're in a small uh, village in France, it's market day, and lunch is on our minds. We're always told, don't eat the skin of the chicken. And look at all the butter yeah, this man's it's, putting it's, up. It's the part, it's the <laughs> part. My gastronomic guide is William Page. This chef and restaurateur has lived in France for the last 12 years. He's just been awarded a prestigious Michelin hat, the ultimate symbol of acceptance here. You wouldn't eat it like that, You better would. You? Oh, yeah, for sure. Lots of mashed potatoes with it. But to take up the butter. Mm, yeah. Well, that crunchy bit, that's what it's about. <laughs> Anywhere else, you'd have a heart attack at the mere sight of these chooks drowning in butter. But in France, they drool over it. As we all know, the French love to thumb their nose at convention. Here they've made political incorrectness an art form. So, for instance, if the common wisdom is butter is bad, then the French will eat more butter. They feel absolutely no guilt eating, drinking, whatever they want. It's an incredibly liberating way to live and infuriatingly for the rest of us who spend most of our lives concerned by what we consume, it seems to be healthy. <laughs> There's hardly a fatty to be found in France, despite their high-fat diet. And this is the French paradox. They have one of the richest diets on the planet, but about half our rate of obesity. And their incidence of heart disease is one of the lowest in the world. So the other interesting thing that when the French develop risk factors such as high blood pressure, cholesterol, and, and of course they smoke a lot more than we do, they seem to be partly immune to these risk factors. That's the other thing which is very interesting. As a cardiologist, David Cahoon has long been intrigued by the French paradox. I think a lot of it is the diet. Certainly it's the lifestyle. It's not the genes. It's not genetics. And we've seen that in one study after another, that culture is very important. And a big part of culture is what you eat. It's oyster, mm. and of course in France, it's butter. <laughs> Dr. Michel Delogerel is a French cardiologist responsible for many of those studies. French love cream and butter. They put butter and they put cream <laughs> on everything they eat. Really? Yeah, yes, yes. It's a wonderful only in France moment where a restaurant is the laboratory and lunch, this man's experiment. And are snails good for you? Yes, very good. <laughs> One of Dr. Delogerel's explanations for the paradox is that the bad things in the diet, the saturated fats, red meat, butter and cream, are cancelled out by the good things, the variety, the freshness and the overall quality of the food. But the key is drinking. Wine is the real lifesaver. And so every lunchtime you have some wine? Yeah, that is, is typically French. We have all the time a bottle of wine open. The way of drinking of the French is chronic drinking every day, every day, and moderate drinking. This is rare medical advice, but science has confirmed what's long been suspected. People who drink a couple of glasses of wine every day live longer than those who don't drink at all. Alcohol also protects those who've had heart attacks. In our studies, in patients with established coronary heart disease, uh, two to four drinks were associated with a 50% reduction of the risk of recurrence. So drink moderately and you halve the risk of having a second heart attack. Yes, exactly. This is scientifically demonstrated. One or two glasses of alcohol per day probably, in most people, protects your heart, may protect against stroke, and there's evidence that it may protect against dementia. So I want to tell the good news. I think it's important to tell the good news about uh, alcohol or wine, wine particularly, and a glass of beer occasionally, uh, and not be afraid to tell the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> A lot of the food that you hear about is food that is on the surface not very healthy but there's other things they add to the food so it's the total blend you see so when they have uh, their fatty meal a lot of the time they have cheese 
cheese modified or fermented milk is actually not dangerous. Grape juice, which is fermented wine, not dangerous, positively healthy. It's going to be a ravioli truffle mm -hmm. with a wild mushroom cream. That's what we're going to do here. So we're going to get that cream again. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes and no. Yeah. You just so happen to fall upon this particular dish. <laughs> In the kitchen of William Page's restaurant, lunch is on the menu. It's like this every day. In France, the midday meal is rarely a grab-and-run affair. Much more, it's an affair to remember. France closes down between midday and 2 o'clock every day. I mean, between midday and 2 o'clock, all of businesses, all of commerce, everything's closed. And so they generally go home to eat, or they eat in a restaurant or whatever. But yeah, everybody eats lunch, and like a real sit-down lunch. Or so not like a sandwich that not, we might... Not at all. For the French, a long lunch could well mean a long life. Taking your time is good for you. More courses mean more variety. And a satisfied stomach means no snacking. An entree main course, that sort of structured thing, means that the balance is better. And I think you make the distinction between what they eat and how they eat. I think how they eat is very healthy. I know I lost weight when I came to France. The French don't deliberately diet to lose weight like the Australians and Americans. It's something like 90% of Americans have been on a weight reducing diet, yet they're the fattest in the world. So the Americans are obsessed with diet, and we, increasingly so, obsessed with re de decreasing weight and being healthy, yet we have unhealthy diets. The French just choose what they like, choose well, yet don't overeat. And I think it's to do with the food they eat. All too often, like in America, we judge the quality of our food by quantity and by how quickly we get it and how fast we can eat it. But in France, it's all about quality. They even have food police patrolling cheese shops and delicatessens. Anywhere there's food. There are fines and loss of licence for poor quality products. They consider it as, as something more than just uh, having to eat to keep the motor turning over. It's more than just physical nourishment. Je crois que la variété permet aux enfants. You put a, a great effort into teaching them variety. Um, it's also a matter of sitting together and that it's a conviviality, that they take pleasure in each, other, each other's company. It's very important that children don't eat alone. No wonder the French consider themselves the kings of cuisine. And their appreciation of wine is just as important and begins just as early. Monsieur Dozer was saying that when he was, when he was five or six, they always had a bit of wine mixed with water on the table right from a very early age, so they, they're used to it early on. Bread to make wine, yeah, bread to drink yeah, wine. <laughs> While the French thrive on ignoring dietary convention, our fixation with it grows. The Zone diet, the Callaway diet, this orgasmic diet, the healing diet, the Hawaiian diet, don't diet, Eskimo. It goes on and on and on. And what's the craziest diet you've heard of? The craziest diet is the Hallelujah diet, actually. <laughs> The greater our obsession with losing weight, the more we pile on. Portion sizes are getting bigger. And we're all tuned to eat what's on our plate. You know, this is, you've got to eat what's on your plate. As portions get bigger, people eat more. And uh, we're just over-consuming. That's it. But so far, the French have avoided the bad eating habits the rest of us overindulge in. The French don't snack as much as we do. They don't drink the soft drinks in between meals that we do. And I think the French uh, do more exercise or walk more without going to gyms. They just like walking. Uh, Promenading. Promenade, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, they like to do that. Um, and, you know, they burn up calories without trying. And that's also another healthy aspect. Um, and if you do go for a walk, you uh, actually tend to be less depressed. And if you're less depressed, you don't tend to overeat to compensate for your mood. Thank you.
David Cahoon is doing a long-term study on the effect of diet on heart patients. He recommends a variation to the French paradox, the Mediterranean diet. Replace the butter and red meats with olive oil and fish, but keep the daily wine. And is it protecting them from further heart attacks? Well, the evidence from two big trials is that heart attacks may be reduced by more than 50% simply by modifying the diet. Very simple. The French are considered the most pleasure-driven people on earth. So even if we don't like their rich food, perhaps we can learn from their attitude. C'est la vie. Stop swallowing the diet propaganda, concentrate on common sense, and quite literally, eat to your heart's content. You don't just eat to protect your heart, you eat because you enjoy it. And the French enjoy their food, and, and we should get away that, from the idea that food is just fuel and acting to make us healthy. The key thing about eating is to enjoy what you're eating, but when you've eaten enough, don't eat any more. Be satisfied. That's a key thing. And don't snack. Okay, I won't. <laughs>